Hey y'all, welcome to Clackbait. Today we're taking a look at the Ginkgo 65 Pro by M1 Studio. Some of you may remember the original Ginkgo 65, which was a heck of a deal for what you paid for back then. By all accounts, this is a round two, but with the main design being mostly the same, I think the Pro branding is fitting. But is it still a bargain today at $259? Let's talk about it. By the way, this is my second review in a row with a non-flex cut PCB option. Wait, you hear that? Yeah, that's the sound of preferences being satisfied all over the world. So the Ginkgo 65 Pro is set to go into group by March 15th through April 3rd with an expected delivery in Q3 of 2023. Wuche Studio will be running the group by globally with many local vendors carrying it as well. Canon Keys is the vendor here in the United States. A quick note of transparency, this video is sponsored by Wuche Studio, but the way I work my sponsorships, they get no input on the content and no preview of the video before it goes live. So they are seeing this video when you do. Okay, back to the Ginkgo Pro. There are a few color options to select from, including E-White and Gold, E-White and Copper, Black and Copper, Black and Burgundy, which looks super sick, Blue and Blue, Blue and E-White, Purple and Silver, Silver and Silver, Champagne and Copper, and Champagne and Gold, which is the one that I have. They also give you the option to select the bottom logo color in a PVD black, gold, silver, or prism. The material for this bottom weight is brass. Now in the kit, you're gonna get the storage case. By default, you can get a polycarbonate plate, which doesn't have any flex cuts. Keep in mind the FR4 and the aluminum have a ton of flex cuts in them. So if that's not your thing, then go ahead and skip that. But if it is, hey, there it is. A 1.2 millimeter hot swap PCB which supports step caps, a 7U space bar, and is compatible with VIA. The PCB has a ton of flex cuts, but like I said before, you can select a non-flex cut PCB if that's what your preference is. Unfortunately, I was only sent the flex cut version, so I can't test and tell you what the non-flex cut version is going to be like. ESD protection is also on board. You also get a pre-installed daughter board by AIO3 and it's included with the JST cable. You get two different gasket modules with this keyboard. You can either use these silicone modules or these swan gaskets, which are really springy. You get the pour on, which goes on top of the silicone gaskets and rubber stickers that go on top of the swan gaskets. And you also get these silicone gasket sleeves, which goes directly onto the plate, no matter which gasket configuration you choose to use. All the usual foam suspects are here, including plate foam, IXPE sheet and case foam. And there's also a PET insulated plate which prevents the hot swap sockets from touching the bottom case so the PCB doesn't short. You also get the rubber feet and these M1 Studio stabilizers. You can also purchase this cool blocker in a few colors as well. I like the way this looks and it's something new to the Ginkgo line of keyboards. You simply slide into the slot in the top case and screw it in. Now keep in mind this is an additional purchase, it doesn't come with the standard kit. Now the case design is nice and has a beautiful raised upper with some deep cut corners. I think this adds some nice dimension to the overall look. I also really like the fact that the bottom case color shows easily from any side angle. Something to think about when you're selecting your color. The USB-C port is centered and the quality of the anno and materials are very good. Overall, I think this is a solid looking keyboard. As far as typing comfort, the Ginkgo 65 Pro has a typing angle of 7 degrees paired with a 19mm front height and fully built the board comes in at 3.19 pounds. Now typing feel wise, the board is really bouncy. If a stiff experience is what you're after, you may want to look elsewhere. Personally, I really like this typing feel. The Swan gaskets are softer than the silicone poron gaskets, but not by much. Between the two, I do prefer the Swan gaskets. It's unique and it's executed pretty well. Sound wise, I think the Ginkgo sounds just okay. The Alpha sound pretty thin to me, even when using most of the foams. Using the IXPE sheet will obviously help alleviate some of that thinness. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not hitting how I personally like it. I'd be curious to see how the non-flex cut PCB changes the sound. I suspect that it should make the alpha sound fuller, but since I don't have it on hand, it's hard for me to say. The mods all sound pretty good though, and the spacebar slaps. All in all, I think this is a solid option at $259, although the wait time until Q3 may not be for everyone. But if you do love the design and the unique mounting methods, you may want to give the Ginkgo 65 Pro a look. I have a few typing tests for you guys, one with plate and case foam using the swan gaskets and one with the silicone poron gaskets, as well as a sound test using all the foams, including the IXP sheet. To me, the one with all the foams sounds the best. That's all I got for this one. Catch you in the next one. Enjoy the typing test. Peace.